everyone, welcome back to another Stitches and Scribbles bullet journaling video. My name is Erin and today I am working on my December 2021 journal. I started off as I always do by adding tape to my table of contents and then taping the edge of my first page of December. This just means that I'm able to find it easily from the outside if my bookmark um, is not in the right place. So I know that the medium green color is my December tab. Then I started off with my title page for the month. I decided to go with a snow globe for this one, partially to just uh, make sure that I wouldn't do my typical floral or greenery wreath. I wanted to do something different. I decided to stick with a traditional red and green color palette for this one, but I didn't do a lot of like really obvious Christmas themes. I've got some ornaments. I've definitely got a lot of pine trees. Um, but I tried to do different things from what I've done in the past. So the snow globe was definitely a new element. I haven't used that in a previous bullet journal. Um, I used some light blue just to highlight the edges of the dome, as well as adding a little reflection. And then I just filled it in with markers. I used mostly Crayola Super Tips for this one. And you'll see that I think I'm approaching um, needing to get a new pack because some of my colors are definitely starting to run out of ink. Um, I did kind of adapt for this as I went because I didn't want to go out and get new ones right in the middle. So there are some colors that I avoided as the video goes on. Um, but you'll see that as we get there. I used a couple different shades of green for these pine trees and then filled in all the little details. Gave the snowman a little red scarf and colored in the base. I really like how this snow globe turned out. I do wish I had done it in pencil first because it doesn't look super round at the top. Um, but that's okay. It's not really noticeable in the final design. It's just something that I notice. And then, of course, writing... The month at the bottom i went with some faux calligraphy for this one so i just wrote it out in cursive first and then made all of the down strokes a little bit thicker and for this i used my stabilo pen moving on to the first theme we start with a wednesday in December this year so I did have a little bit of extra space on the side I started with a plain dark green border and dark green numbers added my space for journal notes prayer and gratitude at the top you'll see in this video that I accidentally labeled um, the days starting with Monday so I did go back and fix that off camera um, just kind of a silly little mistake. I did a nice big evergreen tree that matches the ones from the snow globe on the front. Again, not specifically a Christmas tree. I definitely did a lot more like pine trees and generally wintry things. I don't really get into ornaments until the last week. I think in the past I've done like a peppermint theme and a candy theme. Yeah, this is where I <laughs> labeled those dates incorrectly. So I did go back and fix it, just not on camera. For my second one, I decided to do some holly. This one's definitely more Christmassy instead of wintry. And I used those little holly clusters to fill in the corners of my weekly sections. I do really like how the holly turned out. Holly is definitely something that I do use fairly frequently in my bullet journals, but I went back and looked at mine from last year and noticed I didn't use it last year, so I decided to use it in this one. Because the holly was so decorative, I kept the numbers and the divisions for each day fairly simple with just the red and green markers. 
and then I wrote the day of the week in cursive at the top using a thin stabilo again. And then of course added labels for my other weekly sections. I decided to have fun with this theme and do some Christmassy gnomes. I really had fun knitting gnomes for a craft, a couple of craft fairs this year, so I wanted to incorporate them into my kind of holiday themed bullet journal spreads. So I have a gnome with a beard on one side and one with braids on the other side. And I really had fun drawing these. I think they turned out really cute. I did kind of just freehand them. I didn't really practice this ahead of time, but I still think they turned out pretty cute. I think this is the only mid liner that I used, mild liner that I used was the peach and the brown. And then the rest was in Crayola Super Tips. I apologize if you can hear the train in the background. I don't know if that's going to come across in my voiceover or not. We'll find out. This is one of the sections where one of my markers started kind of losing ink. You'll see it on the red here. Originally, I wanted the one gnome to have a red hat and the other one to have a red shirt, but I was really running out of ink here and knew that this marker uh, did not have a lot of life left in it. So I kind of abandoned that plan and went with a lighter shade of green for the other gnome's shirt, which I still think turned out pretty good. Then I used that same light green to do my borders. and the numbers as well. I contrasted with a red stabilo for all of my other labels. For this one, I did some pine branches with dangling ornaments. This is definitely a theme that I have used before. I don't think I did it last year, but I definitely did it the year before that. And then I made the divisions, the hanging ornaments. I have definitely haven't done it before where the ornaments are hanging this far down the page. I usually just have them at the top but I liked using them as the dividing lines for each day. Added some little highlights to the ornaments and then filled them in with shades of red. I kept them fairly small so that I could still use the shade of red that was uh, running out of ink. I did something similar for my mood tracker just to keep each space really, really small in case I had to use that shade of red again. I added the dates in red as well and used some gray for the silver at the top of the ornaments. For my final spread, I just did some um, plain green dividers and you'll see it in a minute, but I do put another pine tree on this page because we end the month on a Saturday, so I had an extra section. And for this page, I decided to use the lightest colors of my color palette, so it's kind of a pastel red and green page, I guess. And I really like how this one turned out, actually. I kind of wish that I had focused more on these colors earlier in my spreads, but I like that they ended up with a page at the end. Then I did my trackers. So for this mood tracker, I decided I wanted more of those hanging ornaments. So I decided to have them all coming down from the top of the page, which ended up working out perfectly. 
I also did a variety of sizes and two different shapes for my ornaments. So I have some like teardrop icicle shaped ones and some round ones as well. I did put the numbers underneath each ornament just so that I could keep track of which day was which. And for all of my tracker boxes, I wrote the title at the top and then made it into the 3D box that I love to use so much. I did have to go back and check my moods, not because I forgot them, but because I changed a couple of them last month and started using a different system with one fewer color, so I had to check how I worded it in the previous one because I ended up liking that a lot better. I also did my habit tracker at the bottom, and I apologize that this one went off camera so much. I was really having trouble getting my whole bullet journal on or visible on camera this time. Um, I realized I was putting a lot of details all the way at the top and all the way at the bottom on most of my spreads, which made it very hard to film. Um, if you hadn't really noticed it, I do use a really large bullet journal compared to most people, um, but that is actually something that I'm not going to continue in 2022. I'm definitely going to be looking for a more traditional size bullet journal to change things up. I used the giant one because of teaching. It was easier to lay out all the tasks that I needed, but I'm not teaching anymore, so I'm going to be um, definitely making a lot of changes to my bullet journal spreads in 2022. I added in sections for the books I read, some health things, and also goals for the month as well. Then I went in and created my mood tracker color palette and used some of those colors as the shadow on my other tracker boxes. I really liked how this mood tracker page turned out. I'm definitely glad that I stopped tracking quite so many habits each month um, because it was becoming really overwhelming and then if I forgot a day I couldn't remember if I had done all the things or not. So um, I'm definitely glad that I am tracking fewer things but there are also a lot of things that I was putting in habits even though I was doing them every day anyway. Here's our final flip through of all those pages trying to show you the top and the bottom of each one because it's hard to see. I definitely had a lot of fun with the themes for this month and I debated not doing a Christmassy theme at all and only using like greens and grays and doing all evergreen themes, which is why there's a lot of trees that show up. But I'm glad I added the pop of red back in there. I think it turned out cute. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!